How you guys doing? My name is Dane Christensen. Uh, if you guys are new, I was going to show you guys how to chain today and the way I do it. And I've heard of a couple guys having a couple little issues here and there about hanging chains, chaining up, stuff like that. Any concerns or anything like that. So we're going to go through it today and uh, show you how I do it. All right. You guys are ready? Let's get started with this. Uh, first things I, I always try to do is try to get myself set up for success is the way I always put it. Try to get all your stuff ready and out and ready to go. Oh, this thing sucks. Some of these things are worn pretty bad. We're only going to be doing one tire and we're going to be doing an outside tire on the uh, drives here. I can get a bungee out. As you see, the stuff sitting inside of things and shaking around tend to get stuck all over the place. So this is, they call them a, an octopus. So it's pretty much just a multi bungee circle to hold your chains tighter on the outside. So get one of those out. We're also gonna need guys call them spider bungees. Uh, spider bungees, octopus, uh, there's so many different names for them that everybody, it seems like everybody has their own, their own one. We're also going to need one of the keys for the cams on the chains. Me personally, I have a kind of a specialty one because it, you can really get a lot of torque on it and it's a lot bigger and it's a lot easier to handle when you're in a whole bunch of mess with snow and ice all over the place. Okay. So, so that's all my equipment that I'm going to need to chain up this one tire. So now we're going to get the chains out. And after a while, these bouncing around out here, they do get pretty tight. So you might struggle a little bit to get the first set off. So there's my set of chains. Now I'm going to lay them out on the ground and you try to get them all straightened out. And what we're doing here is that we're trying to make sure that we don't have any twists or anything in our chains before we put them on and so we can grab them the proper way to be able to put them on. So there's my chains. So I have my cams here and I have my straight links in the back. So the way I want to grab this chain is from this way because my cams are on this side. So if I grab on the outside like this, come up. Now we're going to come around. We're literally going to just lay the chain right on top. Try to get it even as you can. So this is one thing I do want to specify. Right here, you have the bent up link that holds on the side links. You want the hooks to make sure that they're facing outward, because if you don't, it will put a huge tear in the sidewall of your tire, and you're going to end up being stuck on the side of the road. And that's something you definitely don't want in the middle of a snowstorm. So now, I'm going to adjust my links to where I have a little bit of slack up front. So you see I got a little bit of a pile of chains in the front here. So this first set of links, what I do is I shove it up underneath the tire, making sure your side links are faced out. You just want to get it in, inside as much as you can and even. Like I said, the reason I shove that down in there like that is my first set I roll forward a little bit I trap that first link in that cross member so I can pull all the slack out of the chain so I can get them as tight as possible now one thing people have to realize is that it's not going to be dry and sunny when you're doing it no it, it's going to be it's going to be gross it's going to be wet it's going to be wet you're going to have all kinds of stuff falling on here you're going to have stuff coming off the trailer so like a one piece or a jumpsuit or rain suit or so I carry 
bibs, just a pair of like water resistant bibs that I bought at, I think it was Farm and Fleet a long time ago. They're not super expensive or nice or anything like that. It's just it's something that keeps you dry. Okay. And that's all I really care about personally. Okay. Because we kind of tend to tear things up out here. Okay. But I can see already. Just want to make sure that that is nice and taut right there. I'm going to jump in the truck and I'm going to pull it forward slightly. Back out of the truck we right. go. So I'm on top of that first link there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up over the top here and I'm going to try to pull out as much slack as I can because this is like the main part to where you can get these pretty tight and it's just walking it back and forth trying to get it nice and tight. So you can see how it's coming nice and tight up and around. All my cans are open all the way around. All my cams are. Now, now I'm going to pull the truck the rest of the way forward to be able to access the chains from the rear. So sometimes when you do pull forward, it does take a, pull a little bit of slack up front. So I normally just give it another yank or so, try to pull the rest of the slack out, just to make sure. Looks like I got most of it out. So I try to do the inside link first and the outside. So there's a couple different types of chains that we do have here. We have ones that just have hooks on them, and then you're gonna have like the end links here um, if they're going to be uneven, make sure they're un the the more the more links are on the inside than the outside because you're going to have bungees on the outside holding that tight. On the inside, you're not going to have anything. So these are a little bit different. So I got a hook on the inside, and I have a, like a clamp system on the outside. So inside, I'm going to try to get as far as I can with the links. And here, I can get to the third link without a struggle. So this one, now I'm going to bring this up. I can also get to the third link. You can pull that nice and tight. Get this locking. Just like that. And now, we're going to go around and do all of our cams. Make sure this is nice and tight. This one there. And then for the, the last one, normally what I do, I'll pull up and I'll try to get the last one so I'm not burying myself in the snow and getting all more gross than I already am. So as of right now, you can see these chains are extremely tight and that's, I still have a whole nother cam to do. Okay. Now for extra security, I put a bungee on. I normally start on top. I try to stay away from where the cams are as much as possible. And again, I have the hooks facing outward, so I'm not putting any type of sharp points or anything like that against their tires. Take that, stretch it down. What I tend to do is I kind of grab it, and I kind of lean into it, kind of use your body weight to be able to get it down and in. This one. And again, you're not putting up further. Exactly, I'm trying my best. So like, this is the link you really want to avoid here or putting it on one of the cans because you can pull it off. Chains come loose, they fly off. They can get in the inside here, tear up your airlines. There's all things that can happen. So the next one and the last one. So I got you here, you got the chain on, you got the spider bungee or the octopus on. Rule of thumb when you're operating in inclement conditions with tire chains, maximum miles per hour. I wouldn't go anything over 30. Nothing over 30 miles. On snow. 
specifically on snow and ice. Okay. Nothing more than 30 miles an hour, and that's like max. Okay. I normally do about 20 to 25. I feel a little bit safer at that speed. That's my personal, like what I like to do. Okay. Um, dry pavement, because they, they really tend to have you chain up in dry, in like it's just raining, and as you're going up the mountain, you're gonna hit snow. So they have you chain up pretty early normally, and like then, nothing over 20, because you'll, you'll just chew your chains apart, okay. and they'll end up coming flying off. Okay, now for you, normally when you chain up, show me the tires you normally chain up. So it really depends on what states you go to. Okay. So I go, to, I go into Oregon, and I also go into, into in Washington. So in Oregon, I do all outside drives. All four? Yes, all four, all all four outside. outside in Oregon, but in in Washington, I have to do both. You have to do outside and inside? Outside and inside. On all four? On all four. So I have to do all eight on so, just so the tractor alone. Chains. I need eight, oh, four sets, yeah. Four, four complete sets of yeah. chains. Just for the tractor. Just for the tractor. And then for the trailer, Washington, if I remember correctly, laws change a whole bunch, so make sure that you look up your, the most recent laws. Okay. when it comes down to chaining for these states. Um, for Oregon, they want out, one outside per axle. Okay. So normally what I do is I crisscross them. So if I'm pulling a long box, like a 53, I'll do one on the first drag axle on this side and then one on the next, the back drag axle on this side. And then for a set, same thing, one here, one there, one here, and just go back and forth for Oregon. It's uh, Oregon, Colorado, I can't remember what California's are specific. Okay. And then, how do you code yourself when you're doing chains? So I go in. You go into. If I remember correctly, it's other and then chaining. And then chaining. And then when you're done and you're down and you're able to unchain, you go back on. It says chaining and unchaining on, on the actual IVIS. Okay. So you hit that. And that'll ensure that you get paid. Correctly. Yes. And if I remember correctly, it's time spent. It's time spent. Okay. Okay. And then you're going to show us how to. Them yep. Because you can't just throw them back on. The no. Uh, if you if you throw just throw them back on, once they settle, because after hitting some bumps and everything, they'll start settling out, okay. and you can start having chains dragging, and if they're dragging good enough, they can get up underneath your tires, and you can r literally rip them right off that rack or rip the rack right off. Yes. Okay. A, li a little bit. Okay. So. Okay. Basically, do it backwards. Yep. So that, right back to the chaining tool. As you see how tight I was able to get those with the method that I use. Yep. And it's just been successful for me. So I, I hope it's successful that's for other people. I know a lot of guys buy for themselves. Yeah, um, the yeah I found this at uh, the Iowa 80. Okay. So if we're going to be getting in the mountains, more than likely, don't get me wrong, I understand there's different ways to go, but you're going to be going down 80. So Iowa 80, I think it was 40, 50 bucks. I know it's a little expensive, but I've had Cheers. it for two years. Still and stuff. yeah, it, it, <laughs> I'm it's not your, nice to it. It's your tools. Exactly. And like these, these are nice and all. Those are provided with each bag of chains. Yeah, quickly. these are provided with the chains. They go missing really quick. <laughs> yeah, well, Because you'll forget them on the catwalk or you accidentally like get your cams on, set on the tire. Then you forget about it. Now you just rolled away and it just came off and it's somewhere wherever you're at okay but each set of chains in a bag comes with two of these comes with two of them. yes okay so they're, they're decent but you can't really get a lot of torque on them you can't put a lot of torque and like once you like especially with the way i i, I do my chains nice i can't i i can't use one of these because it's just too difficult and it ends up digging into your hand really bad okay. so i prefer that over these but these do still come in handy that's why i keep them because okay. even Say that's the first thing you grab and you just want to get get it done and over with. Just grab it and go. You know what I mean? Right. So now since I have all my cams undone, I'm going to come back out to this link right here. Push it in. Pull the security link off. That Let literally it drop. just drops right off. Okay. On the inside here. They have a hook. So that was that hook that I was talking about. Okay. And some of the chains actually have a hook like this on both sides. Okay. 
Okay. And it, like I was saying earlier, if you're going to have this uneven amount of like number of links, okay, have the more amount of links on the inside than the outside. Okay. Because if you do it and you have more out here, it has a tendency to kind of start going like this, and then it will climb up over the tire, come right off, and you lose a lose a set of chains. Okay. So. So. What I do is I go straight out. I try to keep them as straight as possible so they're nice. Sometimes you really can't do this because you got traffic coming by you or not, whatnot. So that's the way I do it right there. Okay. To keep your, yourself out of traffic's way as much as possible. Now I'm gonna roll forward and try to get them out. It's a tool of trade for one thing and honestly, once you get it, you get it down, and you get you see what you're doing and all that stuff. It, it's really not that bad. All right, so so you saw how I took it off originally. So I had the cams facing out outward this way, and I ended up having to grab it this way so I could sling it up and over. You want the cams to face down because they're kind of bulky. So when you hang them, they kind of get in the way and they make more bulk than what's necessary. So now it's going to be opposite. I want the cams facing downward when I pick it up. But this time I'm going to pick it up from more along the further left side than centered. Okay. Kind of like that. Let me get, scooch my bag out of the way. So I try to go so you can see it's one, two, third link. You want kind of like this one to be dropped just perfectly. I, I know it sounds weird, but there's a little bit of an art to it. Yeah, I guess is the best way to put it. And then I come back around. One, two. And try to keep this as taut as possible as you're going. And you're literally just weaving it back and forth. Here's your last set. Try to shake them down as much as you can. Once you start hitting bumps and everything, these are gonna sink into that and pretty much compress down. Okay. But if you come to the side here, I yeah. Know some guys, do you have to lock? I, I believe I know some guys have had their chains go missing. Yes, yes. Um, it depends on which ones you have. This is the older style that we, we have. Okay. And if we actually, if you wanna walk over this tractor right here, it should have the newer type. So okay. these are the and these are the newer style. Um, I actually kind of like the older ones more because you have the whole case that comes up over the top and sits up against these like points, okay. which I kind of like because it really does secure the chain down. Okay. These um, I've had them once you get a, I'd say probably two to three chains on these. Okay. Th that last one you'll start hopping links off. And it'll start dry, it'll start hanging. And this right is all here. that, yeah. And okay. this is all you have to catch it. Okay. With the other one, it literally comes straight across the top and literally hugs around the side and is on top of these. So there's no way they can actually jump and come off. Come off. So, so it's something that any time you come to a stop, whether it's... Yes, yeah, uh, any time you fuel, take break, your break. Anything like that. Yeah, any walk, break or anything like that, just around, stop, take a look. And if you're running sleepers, make sure you're checking your chains. Yeah, because if they start dragging, they get up, they get under your tire. You literally rip that. You can rip that bracket right off. Okay. Bend the. I guess those are U bolts. That's what they look like to me. Okay. So, it be a mess. I guess is the best way to put it. Yep. Okay. Go back. Um, by we yours. got the chains set back up on our things. We're gonna put the cover back on. So this cover is. This one's kind of beat up, so it is. It doesn't fit 100% proper sometimes, as you see miles and miles. The uh, the tips yeah, have worn window. through. <laughs> So I put, I put the cotter key back in there, and that's what I use for right now. Um, I used to lock them, but the last time I locked them, the locks froze up on me. Uh, and I needed them like right then and there, right. and I ended up breaking them with this thing. Just okay. pounding on them until they broke, okay. because I couldn't get a key in it or anything. All right. So, pretty much make sure you grab all of your equipment so you don't have anything falling off your catwalk in, into traffic or anything like that. Yep, sweep the area, make sure you don't leave any of your... Chains or... Yep. Go 
about your day. Yep. And that'd pretty much be all, all you need to do is make sure you're all set up and all put away like this. All right. Don't forget your tools. I appreciate it, Dane. No problem. All right, buddy. Be safe. Have a nice day, bud.